Hey, you're listening to episode number 123 of the Keto Diet Podcast. This is another mini-sode. I'm pretty excited to be chatting about keto with you guys today. And really, I wanted to focus on what keto is. I get this question a lot of like, what is keto? And I think a lot of people explain it differently depending on who you ask, but I wanted to put my explanation into the pot, especially now that it's January and people are asking this question more and more and more. I thought it would be helpful and also give you some thoughts on how I practice keto and how it can be different from everyone out there. Now, if you have questions about today's content, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me. You can also grab the podcast extra and transcript and this will include all the different links and resources in one spot which you guys can find over at healthfulpursuit.com slash podcast slash e123 okay let's do this thing You're listening to the Keto Diet Podcast and Happy Keto Body, my 12-week video training program for the keto lady who wants to take back her health and live fabulously closes for registration on January 31st, 2019, that's tomorrow, at 11.59 p.m. Pacific. I don't know when Happy Keto Body will open up again, so if you're interested in ending struggle, anxiety, PMS, frustration, and all the not-so-awesome symptoms keeping you from feeling your best on keto, head to happyketobody.com. Even if you've always struggled with your weight, hormone imbalances, or a specific health diagnosis, even if you're menopausal, postmenopausal, perimenopausal, Happy Keto Body is for every woman who wants to take control of her health, kick her cravings, and finally feel amazing in her body. All the details are at happyketobody.com. Okay, now on to the show. We're going to be chatting all about what keto is, how we practice it, and if you're looking for more support on laying the foundation for keto plus tweaking keto to make it work for your body, that's what the keto bundle is for. And you can grab that at healthfulpursuit.com slash bundle, and we'll include that in today's show notes and links. Okay, what is keto? Well, keto is a low carb, high fat approach to nourishing your body. And I think that the nourishing piece is so, so important to remember. Yeah, you can do keto as a low carb, high fat diet, and you can totally thrive on that. And a lot of people do. But where we sometimes make the mistake is that we just think that the diet, that D word is enough. And by focusing on nourishing our body, we end up making different choices than we do if we just say, well, I'm on the ketogenic diet. But if you say you're eating keto and you're using it to nourish your body, you'd be amazed at the difference in the overall quality of the foods you'll choose and how good you feel. So basically with keto, what we're doing is instead of relying on carbohydrates for energy, which is a non-renewable energy source, we rely on fats, which is a very renewable energy source because we have so much fat already on our bodies to use at any given time. When I reference carbohydrates as a non-renewable energy source, it's really referring to the need that we have to consume carbohydrates in order to get the energy we need. So if you've been a carbohydrate burner for a really long time or you've been keto for a while and you just know this to be true, when you get hungry and you're fueled by carbohydrates, oh my gosh, get out of my way right now, I need to eat. But on keto, you don't really have that need to eat because when you're not eating, your body Body is using your body fat as energy. So you can look at keto in that way. And we need to consume carbohydrates in large quantities to keep our energy up when we're in a carbohydrate burning or glucose burning state. In the case of fat, we have multiple fat cells in our bodies, all of which can fuel us when we're keto. So a lot of people say, oh, Leanne, why aren't you having breakfast or why aren't you having a snack? And I'm like, well, I am. My body's just burning my body fat instead of me eating. And this makes us eat less throughout the day, less eating times, less food needed, and far more energy available to us when we need it. Back to today's episode in a sec. 
Today's show is brought to you by Everly Well. Sometimes we can spend a lot of time doing the right things and get super frustrated when things don't go the way we've planned. This is because there's a lot going on inside our bodies that we just don't know about, like inflammation, allergies, B vitamin irregularities, so many things. Like, did you know if your cortisol is just a little bit too high, it can impact how you lose weight? And if your free T3, a thyroid hormone, is too low, it can directly impact your metabolism, it can be challenging to find a doctor who will order the right tests so that we can determine what little tweaks we can make to our lifestyle to support ourselves to balance. This is why I love Everly Well. They're an at-home collection service with the prick of a finger. You can test your hormones, food sensitivities, B vitamin levels, the strength of your metabolism, and so much more. These tests are remarkably easy to do. You order the kit, it arrives in the mail, you prick your finger like you would testing your ketones, drip the blood sample on the piece of paper, send it in, and voila, your results are delivered to you on their secure platform in just days. You can use the coupon code KETO, all in caps, at healthfulpursuit.com slash well for 15% off your order. Unsure of the link? Simply check out today's show notes for all the deets. Okay, back to today's episode. So becoming keto that's another piece to this conversation. And to get into ketosis, really, all you need to do is eat a certain amount of carbohydrate. Now, I'm not going to say all you need to do is eat 20 grams of carbs for the rest of your life. You're welcome because 20 grams may not be your number. You may be able to get into a ketogenic state eating 80 grams of carbs, 100 grams of carbs. Maybe it has to be 10 grams of carbs. It really depends on your metabolism and how you process carbohydrates and sugar overall. So generally speaking, when you want to get into a state of ketosis or nutritional ketosis, you want to consume the majority of your calories or energy from fat, enjoy moderate moderate protein and limit the carbs. Now, when I say moderate protein, I think what a lot of people think is like the less protein I eat, the better and I'll just eat a bunch of fat. You do need protein. And I think so many of us have made the mistake in the past of not eating enough protein on our ketogenic diet. And any keto veteran would probably say, yo girl, you don't need to be eating limited amounts of protein. Make sure you're eating enough to stay satiated. And in fact, a lot of people can become ketogenic eating a ton of protein. So really the main takeaway here is eat a lot of fat, understand what a carbohydrate is. And if you're still hungry, just add more protein or add more fat. I think a lot of us think it's overly complicated and it's really, really not. And you can take it day by day. Now you want to focus on food quality. Now this isn't necessarily quote unquote ketogenic to do, but like I was saying at the beginning, when it comes to the nourishing aspect, we really want to focus on high quality foods. And while foods that contain grains like corn, wheat, rice, and barley are generally going to be higher in carbohydrates, there are a lot of additives in foods that will have corn, wheat, rice, and barley that may not be the best choices for you and your health. But if you're first getting started on a ketogenic diet and you don't even know what paleo is and you've never even done it before, asking you to focus on keto as well as start eliminating grains, as well as, of course, eliminating sugar. It could be a lot. I hope you're totally digging this episode. I love putting these together every week and I hope you're getting something out of it. I love seeing where you're listening from. So next time you're listening or even right now, take a picture of yourself watching the show or a screenshot of your favorite episode and tag me on Instagram at Healthful Pursuit. And if social isn't your thing, that's totally fine. Just jump on your favorite podcast player and leave a review for the show. Okay, back to the good stuff. So you can look at food quality as a next phase of your keto of just let's get you adapted. Let's get you understanding what a carbohydrate is, how to remove it from your diet. And then we can focus on food quality or the nourishment aspect, which, of course, is the removal of grains. So like I mentioned, corn, wheat, rice, barley, uh, quinoa, amaranth, those sorts of things. And then you have things like legumes, like pinto beans, peanuts, kidney beans, lentils. Now, some vegans or vegetarians or more plant-based individuals will still eat a little bit of legumes on their ketogenic diet. This is all just dependent on how you want to structure your eating. And then there is sugar in all of its forms, including honey, agave, maple syrup, coconut syrup, 
all the sweetener things. Now, if you're like, what am I going to have instead? Uh, my two favorites are monk fruit and erythritol. A lot of people like stevia. I don't love, love it. So if I can just have monk fruit and erythritol, I'm happy. You want to eliminate most fruit. However, berries are very keto friendly. And if you want to go a step further, you can always look at my carb up practice. I will include a link in the show notes where you guys can learn out more about carb ups and how you can incorporate things like fruit and starchy vegetables like potato, squash, yams into your keto protocol. So you can't label foods as keto or not keto. Some foods are just more keto friendly than others. So I know I'm guilty of it too, of being like, and it's keto. And then I have to like correct myself and be like, Leanne, that's really confusing to people because like I said, with the metabolism piece, some people can't eat a lot of carbohydrates, whereas other other people are able to be keto and they can eat quite a few carbohydrates and stay fat adapted. So labeling food as keto or not keto can be really confusing for yourself because, okay, a great example is if you have a handful of almonds, that's pretty keto, good amount of fat, good amount of protein, lower carbs. If you eat an entire bag of almonds, that's probably not quote unquote keto because that's a lot of everything, including carbohydrates. It's really challenging to say whether or not something's keto or not keto. It depends on so many factors. Personally, what I eat on keto has definitely changed over time. I used to be quite strict with all the things, including the foods that I would eat, how I would, how I would prepare them. And now basically I wake up, I drink a lot of water, herbal tea, either cold or hot. Then I have a fatty coffee. Then I maybe have a fat bomb a little bit later. And I really don't start eating until two or three, sometimes even four o'clock in the afternoon. And when I do eat, it's usually some sort of vegetable sauteed in some sort of fat with some sort of protein or organ meat. And that's like it. And then I have that for lunch and dinner and repeat. But then there's other days that I have breakfast, lunch and dinner where I skip that fatty coffee and that fat bomb and I just eat normal like breakfast, lunch, dinner. So you can really have fun with it. Make it your own. And I really encourage you to listen to other people in the keto space and get a lot of different information from a bunch of people so you guys can make your own decisions and understand how to be your own advocate. Back to today's episode in a sec. I've been a Fabletics VIP since September 2018 and just saved oodles of money on a pair of Pamela shorts, a Hudson seamless bralette, and my new favorite running around town pants, my Kerrigan joggers. If you haven't heard of Fabletics yet, let me give you the Coles Notes version. It's a website with a lot of workout wear for physical activities from the gym and beyond. And the prices are super fair, meaning if what's stopping you from getting out and moving your body is a fresh set of leggings, you can get the leggings and get out there. Fabletics is offering listeners of the podcast an incredible deal you won't want to miss. Get two leggings for only $24. This is a $99 value when you sign up as a VIP. Just go to fabletics.com slash keto to take advantage of this deal now. You'll also receive free shipping on orders over $49 and international shipping is available too. Again, that's fabletics.com slash keto. Unsure of the link? Simply check out today's show notes for all the details. Okay, back to today's episode. Like I mentioned, I will include a link in the show notes about the carb up so you guys can learn about that if you're a little bit curious because I think it's really important that we treat keto as a lifestyle and it would be ridiculous for me to sit here right now and say the only way to health and happiness is to eat 20 grams of carbs for the rest of your life okay, goodbye. No, it's totally unrealistic. And you're probably going to have carbs. Life happens. So if you can understand the science behind eating carbohydrates on a ketogenic diet and really time things properly, it's not a big deal. So again, if you have questions about today's content, you can head on over to healthfulpursuit.com slash contact and ask me and I will see you guys on Sunday. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Keto Diet Podcast. Join us again in a couple of days to discover more Keto for Women secrets for your fat-fueled life. 
The Keto Diet Podcast, including show notes and links, provides information in respect to healthy living, recipes, nutrition, and diet, and is intended for informational purposes only. The information provided is not a substitute for medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment, nor is it to be construed as such. We cannot guarantee that the information provided on the Keto Diet Podcast reflects the most up-to-date medical research. Information is provided without any representations or warranties of any kind. Please consult a qualified physician for medical advice and always seek the advice of a qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding your health and nutrition program.